Hi everyone, uh, so my name is Sam Boyd and uh, to give you a quick background about myself, I've been living in China for a little over six years and when I first moved to China, I started a sourcing company and our focus was to help North American businesses get their products manufactured in China. And business was good. Uh, this was at the start of the e-commerce boom and even still today, our company Guided Imports is, is running nice and strong. But three, about three years in, I began to look at or count how many products I was manufacturing, how many products I was responsible for manufacturing, the individual number of units. And I started counting and it was a pretty big number. Uh, it was a number that painfully hurt because the thought was how many of these products were being sold in the US market and ultimately getting into the hands of consumers and then in a very quick amount of time falling into landfills. And because I didn't know that number, but because I had the experience of being an American and being a purchase hungry individual, I had a good feeling that the, mo the majority of the products that we were making were falling into landfills. And at the start of 2019, uh, a business partner and I, who also had this same feeling of he owns a sourcing company and we're manufacturing all of these products that are just, they're not good for the environment, they're just consumerist products, uh, we said, let's make a change to that. And we opened Nexio Projects Asia. So Nexio Projects started in the Netherlands as a CSR consulting company, where we help uh, large companies in Europe go through CSR assessments. And our focus in opening up in Asia was to help both factories and buyers manufacture products in a more sustainable way. So we work on two sides. On the customer side, or on the buyer side, we help take their brands and ta help take their products to be more sustainable or more environmentally friendly. And on the factory side, we work directly with factories to help improve their sustainability. So what we want to talk about today is how can people manufacture products from China in a sustainable or environmentally friendly way? Um, this is sort of the, the shocking slide that people who genuinely care about the environment like to show. And I don't want to focus too much on this, but it's a fact. Uh, we are in a position where uh, the climate is not getting any colder, it's getting warmer and uh, there's a direct correlation with the amount of products that we as individuals are producing and the amount of waste and byproducts that are falling into our ecosystem. So let's, let's look at why this matters. Let's look at why we as, as buyers, as sourcing companies, as CEOs, as brand developers should care about this and why it might make sense to start shifting your focus to start thinking about maybe let's begin taking our brand to be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Um, everyone at this show is capable of making some type of difference. And uh, if you are a consumer who pledges to stop using plastic bags, okay, that's great. You're doing an excellent job. But if you're a manufacturer, if you're a buyer, if you are producing hundreds of thousands of products on a routine basis, then you can make much more of a difference than the individual consumer. And I wanna talk about why this is important. Uh, the green label. And the green label is known as anything that identifies a product with something that is environmentally friendly or sustainable. This number, the number of products that are green now are up substantially. So what does that mean? It means consumers care. The marketing departments of large brands see, okay, consumers buy products that are natural or organic. So let's add more of these labels and they're gonna keep buying them. Also, what surveys are telling us is that 73% of consumers are interested in paying more money for products if they are sustainable. Okay, so the marketing department agrees, the buyers are willing to pay more, 
And now people are focused entirely on products that are sustainable. So sustainability products, products that you purchase this specifically because it's a sustainable product is getting to be a billion dollar business. So let's look at the other side, the other, the, the downtrend. And the downtrend is, okay, the, the embarrassing coal, we're at a 41 year decline in the US with coal. Um, energy is fossil fuel energy. It's, it's, it, we're getting to a point where it's not important as much anymore because we have renewable resources, we have renewable energy. So you see coal as a huge decline. And now, uh, more than 70 countries are passing legislation banning plastic products. So in all various ways, there are co uh, countries all over the world that are saying, okay, we are going to ban single-use straws. We're going to ban single-use uh, containers or plastic bags. And then if you, if you think about it, it from the, the downward trend of uh, energy is now being more and more focused on renewable energy, countries are banning plastic or harmful, wasteful products. And on top of that, where's the money? What is the money doing right now? Invest, uh, investment firms are more and more focused on investing in companies that are sustainably focused, which means that if you're a company that is not sustainable or you don't have any focus of becoming sustainable, your chances of getting investment funding are drastically lower this year than ever before. So this is the this is the big question that we have: is what should brands do, right? Now, I I assume I hope you guys want to follow this trend, because the trend you can look at it either way. You can look at it from the environmentalist. You you care about where the world is headed and you want to do something better, or you can look at it from the money. The money is where the environmentally friendly products or the sustainable products are. So what should you as a brand or you as a buyer or you as a company be doing? The easy, the simple, the kind of cheap way or the cheap marketing win is greenwashing. And unfortunately, for those who are looking for a cheap win, consumers are smart. And we're being able to see these brands and say, okay, just because you put a green label on something, it doesn't mean it's necessarily organic or sustainable. Just because you say that all of your products are green or everything that's inside of your product is natural or green, it doesn't take away from the fact that you are one of the most contaminating companies in the world. Coca-Cola was just called out for being the most contaminating company in the entire world due to the number of plastic bottles that they're producing. And the issue here is it's, it's confusing to uneducated buyers because you're saying our products are natural or our products are made from uh, energy efficient or natural resources when in reality, you're not taking into account the large majority of the product that's not good at all for the environment. But you're showing that we care about the environment. And this is harmful because if 30% of your product is organic, but 70% of your product isn't, that 70% is still making its way back into the food stream and back into individuals' bodies as well as into the sky. Or we have companies who are basically saying our product isn't as good or isn't as bad as our competitors, but your products are still bad. You're still relying on single use products, single use plastic materials that aren't necessarily uh, required for individuals to live a normal, sustainable, happy life. So where should the focus be? What do we want to be focusing on? The, the idea of taking a brand and making it to be more sustainable is overwhelming, and I get that. And uh, what we want to do is educate individuals on the simple steps and the easy ways for you to get those easy wins but still maintain sustainability. 
So without even looking at your products, without even taking the products or the brands that you sell or that, that you manufacture and saying, how can we make these better for the environment? Let's start with the manufacturing process. And you could, in theory, make your products more sustainable by not changing a single thing about the product itself, but improving the manufacturing process. And the way that we can do this is look at four seemingly simple areas. We have renewable energy. Is your factory producing somewhere where it can rely on renewable energy? So it might seem a little ridiculous for you to ask your factory to install solar panels in the roof or to rely on wind energy. It's probably ridiculous, but could your factory be purchasing um, renewable energy from energy departments or ener energy companies as opposed to using coal as an energy? Another is waste reduction. How can you as a brand reduce waste in manufacturing? So plastic uh, is huge in manufacturing, especially single-use plastics, tapes, foams. If you ever watch your products get produced, look at the amount of materials that go into your production that ultimately get thrown away. On top of that, look at your quality control. If you're producing products at a much higher defect rate, you're wasting quite a lot. So if you can slow these things down, ultimately you are building a more sustainable brand. And then the other two that we have is conserving water, using less of it. You are manufacturing a water intensive industry. How can you focus on recycling? How can you focus on reusing that water or using much less? And lastly is an energy audit. If you have no idea how much energy is being used in your manufacturing audit, contact a consultant who focuses in this and go through this type of energy audit just to get a general idea of what's going on. A, a phenomenal example of a company that we work with is Yardbird. So Yardbird is a direct-to-consumer cons US company who focuses on producing patio furniture, outdoor furniture for their, for their clients. And what Yardbird did was they said, we want to make our products sustainable and we want to help clean up the oceans while we are making sustainable products. So they began partnering with organizations that collect plastic from the oceans and will be able to re repurpose this plastic so they can be reused in manufacturing. So Yardbird began working with them, doing their due diligence. And there's three very large companies. If you were to Google them, you'd see them very close to the top that do exactly this. The problem is, is that these guys are commodity traders. So sure, some of the plastic is coming from the ocean, but other is just coming from whoever is selling it the cheapest. And that's a problem because if they are directly focused on cleaning up the ocean, if they're purchasing their, their recycled plastic from these individuals, there's no, there's no confident basis that they have to say, our, our products are ocean recycled plastic material. So what did they do? They flew out to the Philippines. They went to an island which had lost the majority of their fishing, their fishing economy, and they began working with the fishermen and said, look, if you guys go out on your boats every day and collect the ocean plastic, that's gathering all in your oceans due to the way that the, the ocean tides form in this area, we will buy that plastic from you. So they organize all of these fishermen to do this. They're collecting, instead of going out and fishing, they're collecting plastic bags from the ocean, bringing them back. And from there, they are turning this, this recycled ocean plastic into plastic pellets that are used in the injection molding process for their products. And now this company can confidently say that 60% of their plastic material is recycled ocean plastic. So this is a huge example that we have of a company that's doing incredible things. And it's something that I hope is inspiring, but you don't necessarily need to go this far, but you can at the same point. And this company for consumers in the US is known for the amount of sustainability processes that they focus on. Once we go through this process of, okay, how can we improve the manufacturing sustainability and how can we help the, our factories become more sustainable, then we can start thinking about the brands, thinking about the products and thinking about sustainable design. So I think we all understand or have heard the reduce, reuse, recycle. One that we're constantly missing though is repair. Reduce, repair, reuse, recycle. 
So just, just the slides before, we talked about how can we reduce. So you can reduce in manufacturing. You can also reduce in marketing. You can reduce in, in, in uh, the, the number of products that you are selling by creating more higher quality products. And then there's repair. Can you fix your product? Can you control the product lifestyle? Life, I'm sorry, can you control the product life cycle? And before the products go into a landfill, how can you repair them? Is there a way that you can take these products that might inevitably break from your consumers, take them back and fix them so they can continue to use them? Sure, you're saying, well, this isn't very business friendly because then we're gonna sell less. But if we remember before, the marketing trends are saying just the opposite. Buyers want this. They want to spend more. And then reusing it. If your products are good, your end consumer is going to get tired of the product anyway, or they're going to grow out of it, or they're not going to have a use for it, and then they'll be able to sell it on a second, second-hand market. And only then is where you want to recycle. So recycle should always be the last thing. before you, Because re recycling uses lots and lots of energy. But if you can go take the steps before recycling and figure out how can we ma maintain these products life cycle, then you're going to be, again, much more sustainable. An even more famous company that has a phenomenal example of this is Patagonia. I don't know if anyone remembers, but a couple of years ago, Patagonia uh, published this advertisement in the New York Times. They had a full page spread right before um, or right after Thanksgiving on, on Black Friday. And the headline reads, don't buy this jacket. Crazy, right? To take a huge brand and on Black Friday, as, as Black Friday shoppers are opening up their newspaper, planning out their days, they see a giant photo of a jacket, a cool, nice looking jacket, and it says at the top, don't buy it. Okay, let's dissect what Patagonia did because I think this is incredible. So first is reduce. What they explain here is we're gonna make useful gear. We're gonna make useful products, but only buy it if you actually need it. So some might argue that this was a bit of a marketing tactic and in reality, this advertisement did help boost Patagonia sales substantially and they've been growing ever since. But their meaning is true. If you don't need this, don't buy it. But if you do need it, we as Patagonia are gonna pledge to you that if you do not, or if, if your product breaks or needs to be fixed, we're gonna repair it we're gonna fix it and send it back to you. So just like before, they're controlling this product life cycle because this is, a, this is a, a textile or clothing brand that makes awesome, good quality products for individuals who live active outdoor lifestyle, uh, lifestyles. So if they are gonna rip their products, they're gonna rip these products because they're doing adventurous things. But Patagonia is gonna repair them. And after, they're saying, if you are done using this product, we want you to reuse it. We're gonna help you find a home for this product. And they do this by supporting their customers in selling Patagonia products on eBay. So this is incredible. If you think of Apple as, as a good example, they are doing their best to get consumers off of eBay and collect all of, the, all of your secondhand phones. When you're going to buy the new iPhone 11, you're handing in your iPhone, your iPhone 6 to, to, to Apple so they can use energy intensive ways to refurbish it. Instead of taking that cycle and adding in that level of energy, what Patagonia is saying is sell it, sell it on eBay. If it's still good, if it's been repaired, our, we stand by our products, let's reuse it. And at the very last step, Patagonia says, if you send it back to us when you're done with it, when it is so mangled, when it can't be repaired, when nobody wants to buy it or wear it, then we pledge to you that it's not going to end up in a landfill. How cool is that? And for the outdoor enthusiasts that know this brand, this is some of the things that they absolutely love, is that Patagonia cares so much about this. And for those that say, well, this is no way to grow your sales by having good products that people never want to throw away and therefore buy new ones, look at the profit that Patagonia is doing because it's huge. So now let's try to identify where can we begin? Okay, you're, you're small brands, you're small buyers, you're, you're in industries that might not necessarily be Patagonia. What can we do? Let's focus on materials. So 
if you look at the manufacturing process, things such as tape, glue, plastic, and magnets, these are things that are just there to make packaging look beautiful for the shelf appeal, and they ultimately are just gonna be thrown away. So how do we reduce this? You know, we've been manufacturing uh, products for some clients and we're using origami-styled packaging. It's really cool. It's, it's, it's just a single cardboard material that's shaped in an origami fashion where we don't use any tape, there's no plastic added, and what we're shipping is tablets. We're, we're, we're shipping something similar to an iPad. So this is something that is totally possible with all types of brands that can focus entirely on reducing their materials. With that in mind, in this instance, smaller is much better because your marketing team has this concept of shelf appeal, shelf appeal, shelf appeal. We need our packaging to be big. We need our packaging to be beautiful so it stands out in the shelves. But just that little bit more is requiring more containers or more flights for your products to be shipped. So even just bringing down the size of your packaging is an awesome way for you to become more sustainable as a brand. And as you're in this mindset, embrace the minimalism. You don't need flashy, you, you don't need glossy lettering or you don't need all different types of see-through windows that are covered in plastic. Embrace minimalism and be happy with the way that you can sell your product in its raw fashion. There's lots of technologies that are happening too today. Soy-based ink is the coolest one. This stuff is edible, okay? This is ink that's made entirely from soy, it's non-toxic, and it's printed on most types of cardboard. So the colors are not as vivid, but the, the style that it gives off of this raw, organic feeling makes it a growing trend in lots of companies that are focused on sustainable packaging. And very lastly, it's important to work with your manufacturers. We've struggled this in the past where when the brand wants to become more sustainable, what they start doing is telling their factories, okay, you need to stop using plastic. You need to reduce the water. You need to turn off your lights at lunch and doing all of these things. And the factory is like, what? Like, no, why? No way. When we have factories or when we have clients who want their factories to be more sustainable and we go through uh, the consulting process and the auditing phase with these factories, we have to spend four and a half hours educating them. We take an entire day to educate factories on sustainability and why it's important for them to focus on environmentally friendly. Because walking into this, these factories, they don't know, they don't care that, that sustainability is an interest or is a consumer desire. Because for them, electricity is not expensive plastic bags and, and additional resources are, are pretty cheap, so they don't care about it. But when you educate a factory on why it's important for, for them to operate in a sustainable way, they do begin to care because then they get recognized that it is an issue. On the second step is CSR. So corporate social responsibility is by far one of the most boring sounding but best things that I think exists in manufacturing. Because CSR is a way for uh, individuals to see how does a company operate? Are they operating in a way that is socially responsible? So the, the two ones that we're probably the most familiar with, and as you walk around these, these, these halls, you'll see lots of signs from BSCI and SEDEX. But one that I, that I suggest you check out, because it focuses much more on the sustainability side, and they're growing much faster than BSCI and SEDEX, is Ecovadis. Ecovadis is a CSR assessment that focuses entirely on sustainable development goals. And the reason that's important is because they can help educate the factories themselves on how they can begin operating in a more sustainable way. And I keep saying this word sustainable, sustainable, and the reason that it's important, and the reason it's, it's important to educate yourself as well as factories on this, is because at the start, sustainability is not cheap. It's not, it, it's not a cheap way for you to produce goods. But if you act in a sustainable fashion, you save money because you're using less resources, you're working smarter, and people are happier working for you because you're a company that truly cares not only about the products, but the individuals and the environment around you. So if you're lost and you have no idea where to start and you don't even know what's one little thing that we, you can do, an energy audit is a viable way for you to just get a glimpse at the manufacturing process. Because an auditor can go to the factory and they can look at 
how is this factory manufacturing from an energy perspective? Are they wasting a lot of energy or are they using um, way too much energy where they could be reducing it? And if they give you this snapshot, you'll begin to then work on a way for you as a buyer or a manufacturer or a brand to reduce the amount of energy used in manufacturing and therefore become much more sustainable. And the best part about this is that you can do this and you can market all you want that, okay, we're a sustainable brand. Look, if you go, if you go back in the next production run you do, you shrink your packaging size down by four centimeters. You can say to your clients, hey, we are focused on sustainability. We do everything that we can in the eyes of sustainability, which is great. And it's an awesome marketing feat. But the best part about all of this is how good it actually feels. So in the start of this, I was explaining to you guys that I've been manufacturing products that end up in landfills for quite some time, and it's exciting from the, from the, the entrepreneurial businessman that I am, and it's cool to see this company grow, but what's even more exciting is to be able to watch as more and more businesses become sustainable, and they're actually contributing to the environment, because you're the, the ones here that can make the biggest difference in terms of improving the environment. So that's sort of my goal here, is just to get those who are interested in, in, in sitting down and listening, to just begin thinking in this, in this way and start questioning your products or talking to your clients or talking to your bosses to get an idea as to how can you become a more sustainable brand. Thank you. the insightful sharing. So now we will have a Q&A section. So is there any questions from the floor? Please raise your hand. Yeah, this lady, please. We will pass the microphone to you. Thank you for the talk. It was very informative. Do you have any specific advice in terms of how to educate your manufacturer? Because I feel it's a very hard conversation to have. People tend to do the easier and um, cheaper thing. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it starts with their purse. So if you are a brand who does want your factories to be more sustainable, you have to tell them, look, you have two options. One is begin working on us with a plan for you to get more sustainable, or we're going to have to start looking for other factories that will work with us that are sustainable. And when they say, okay, our, the only way that we can continue manufacturing these products is if we're sustainable, then they're going to listen. It starts with money. And I, I, I hesitate as to whether that's a good thing or it's, or it's not a good thing. But I think with sustainability, uh, the means to the end doesn't always matter to some extent, getting them there. So what I recommend to you is if you're going on a, on a route where it's getting them to be more sustainable, go through a sustainability audit like EcoVadis and say, we need you to pass this sustainability audit. We just want to know where you stand. We just want to know what your score is. And then from there, every six months or every year, we're going to work with you on improving. So it, and, and without doing that, you know, they're, if you just say, hey, can you guys be more sustainable or can you be more environmentally friendly? They're just going to think, uh, it's going to cost way too much money. It's too much moth on. I'm not going to do it. 